about here? Yeah, I'll talk about something that we usually don't cover in this channel. It's um, talking about a magazine that was related to Commodore Amiga. And, um, you know, those that are of my age will probably remember the excitement one always felt when one was waiting for the next month's edition of, you know, uh, whatever magazine one thought was the favorite for the computing age. And, um, yeah, it was quite fun, but that, that um, tradition kind of died off. <laughs> but anyway, the, the magazine was called Amiga Format, and um, it uh, lasted for... 136 issues so that's um from 1989 to 2000 so that's how long it lasted in 1991 it was selling 135,000 copies a month so it was actually you know, when it comes to magazines so, and this is uk based so um yeah that, that's uh, quite a lot of magazines and it started off as a as a like a joint magazine, which was covering like the ST Micro and the uh, Amiga in the same magazine. And then they actually split it into after a while they split it into two separate magazines. So you got the ST format and the Amiga format um, separated. And it uh, focused on like uh, reader content. It was mainly like submitted um, games from um, readers and um, then it covered emulators and frequently asked questions and backstage stuff and yeah contemporary articles on on computer tech around the uh, commodore army so what i thought we'd do is just for the fun of it is to uh, just go through the, uh, the editions of course you can't cover all 136 but i just wanted to show you what it looks like um, and um, maybe get somebody else interested because I think it's actually you can actually get it purchase the whole 136 scanned um, magazines at a relatively cheap price uh, from all kinds of sources so I kind of reawaken the magazine hobby <laughs> I'm publishing a magazine per m uh, month just for the fun of it to myself <laughs> but anyway let's take a look Oh, here's the absolute first um, release, and and um, they all come in um, scan uh, PDFs or in scans uh, uh, embedded in a PDF file. So each edition has its own PDF file, at least in the collection that I purchased. And as you see here are the basically the two main competing 16-bit computers of the day. It was uh, something called an ST uh, Micro, and then you had the actual Amiga, and mainly represented by the Amiga 500. So. And, um, and it had lots to do with different games. And the interesting thing is that if, if, if you want more information about um, the games for the Amiga, you can actually look out when when the game was published then you might actually be able to go into the Robin magazines around that time and see if there was a, an article about it so, and, um, let's see they also they contain discs which have extra have the programs and source code and stuff on it and I, I, I'm, I'll actually leave a link in the um, um, comments as to where you can get the package. So the, there's the Internet Archive has actually archived a um, big archive where there's all all the cover discs. Uh, I, what looks like all the cover discs for every single magazine. So with this set that I purchased, I didn't get the um, cover the content of the cover discs. And as you see here, you've got like the uh, word processors and and stuff. And there was actually one interesting thing. It always wants to align it to the left. I don't really know why. Let's see. This. Light years ahead. And it's also what's interesting is that you can actually um, see what was the um, like hype tech. And I think it was this this article. Wait, ah, here we are. Yeah. 
for example, in this this magazine, and, and this is like um, transputer transputers is like the next revolution for the computing industry, and um, I actually got, I'll include a link in the comments to the Wikipedia article. But I mean, this crashed and burned. <laughs> So I mean, this is equivalent to the hype that we have around um, artificial intelligence. Um, uh, yeah, what will be cards and then embedded into computers. But I mean, basically, what this was was, um, if I oversimplify it, it's it's basically an ARM concept CPU embedded in a card with a lot of memory, with um, fast serial interconnect. So it, it tried to sort of compete in its own little niche, and then it was basically just. Yeah, obliterated out of existence because of the cost structure of it. <laughs> so hor hor horribly. So like with a lot of this tech they, 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 they got developed around those years that um, ultimately what killed it was economics. The, the, it was, this wasn't, for the performance you got, it, it, was, it was not cheap enough. It was too expensive to manufacture, too expensive to sell. So, so this also kind of fell on its own, own sword from that perspective. So. It fit all the builds. Too complicated, too expensive to build. Too, and it had its uh, also the uh, niching out in the operating system. So this had its own operating system. They were building their own C compilers and assemblers for it. And, oh my God! It's, it's like the, and um, there's a even in this magazine you already have um, a little mentions of ARM coming into the picture. So, but, but anyway, that, that that was what I wanted to just demo this that, um, that these magazines can be useful to like put a put a piece of software or something that you you're, from a retro perspective you're interested in and then you might be able to actually go in here and find out how it fits into the bigger picture was it ever mentioned and, and, and who and for example they can even get some biographies as who's been involved in what at a certain point in time uh, also what I found interesting is that you can actually look at some of the adver ad advertising and um, for example when it comes to games and or uh, computing hardware so then you can actually find out what uh, what accessories were sold at that point in time uh, and it uh, can be useful also if you, if you happen to find uh, an accessory you don't really recognize or something then you can actually um, dig through these um, magazines and often you can like yeah you can okay, I think there was a advertisement for equipment here somewhere or maybe it was in one of the other ones I need a specialized desktop Yeah, maybe not in this map. Ah, here it was. So you, you can like look at if if you're looking at stuff on eBay and stuff, and then you might actually be able to. Oh, but that's a data switch, and that's something called a MIDI master. And oh, that cable looks like this. Okay, so aha, so it's a printer cable. So you can uh, that's actually useful. And then then when you want to like find out if a Omega 500 memory extension is is, is the original, then you can actually look it up in the magazine. So anyway, this is the very first one that was released, and um, it's not the pure Amiga 4 one because there was this was a you know a mishmash between the ST and the Amiga. So so now we're going to look at the magazine where uh, Amiga format separated in, into its own. So here we go. So that's um, August '89. So then you get the pure Amiga format. With also with the um, cover disc, and then you start. It has uh, the gaming in it, and then here you have this article. Only got four my rise, and you also get the as I said, the is a, a little like um, like archaeological thing. So then you can sort of see okay who was involved in the original only got four my. And then you get these tidbits like the, you know, what happened to the Amiga 2500 over the history. So here, for example, it's a, a small article about um, it vanishing off the face of the earth. 
and also what were the kind of plans of of Commodore before they uh, when they were like going through different iterations also hardware overview again like you can see what hardware was available for these computers in the day what what printers and then you might actually be able to like go on eBay and see if you can find an MPS 1200p uh, if, if you're into really making the, the setup you have a uh, very original and then you can oh then you can say oh I had a color monitor so then you can actually s start searching for that or the disk drive or whatever other things that might be interesting so I, I find it um, fascinating and then yeah like this what is exactly Commodore up to now so you can actually see what uh, and, and it's interesting when you read this then of course this is like, uh, then you have the retrospective view on it that okay what actually happened so you can actually read in this article what they thought was going on and then you can actually you actually know um, by reading other sources or you might actually know what actually <laughs> and um, this is fascinating that uh, not very many people know but Amiga products or uh, 500s, 2000s and stuff they were actually we don't consider it now because we're in a totally different level of video processing capability and software but in, in, in the day the Amiga was very much used for processing video for special effects and for o o overlaying with text and text TV and all, uh, and all kinds of stuff so the, this magazine actually has a pretty good article about um, some of the special features around that and how it was embedded in studios like uh, actually a very big niche that it had and I think that's what kept it going for quite a long time after it actually died from a consumer perspective it was there were there were still text TV systems running Omega 5, um, 2000 oh, for at least 10 20, 10 15 years after the, after the product itself died and also yeah as I said you can come to, like sound stuff and um, software and, 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 and also the gaming scene and the hardware so uh, I, I think it's relatively interesting and as I said you don't need to read every every article or every and, uh, you can just like like I usually do is just to skim through it and see if I can find anything else that is interesting usually I find one or two articles that are still even from today's perspective, interesting to um, look at. So let's move on, and then we—I thought we'd take the absolute last one, and this is in 2000, um, May 2000, when the magazine died and was revoked. And um, what makes this interesting is that there is actually this picture, if you recognize, <laughs> those that were at the beginning of the um, internet age, this is the Netscape logo, so uh, very interesting. And then, because um, that was when things started happening around that, and then there was, um, yeah, Amiga format to close, and there was a little bit of an ending article of the sad demise of this magazine. Something else I thought there was. Ah, this kind of stuff, this e esoteric hardware that's kind of partially based on um, Amiga taking the last remnants of the tech and utilizing it for different purposes. I like the Amiga 500 Power PC and oh yeah. But there was actually something that was. Yeah, and then you see Sia here, and, and this is very interesting because some of the personnel went to work on uh, publications which were Linux related, and some of the personnel went to work on uh, publications related to 3D graphics. And this like shows the technological evolution and the, and, and the way the <coughs> way things were evolving. So here, here you start the emergence of uh, Linux. And <coughs> And real th uh, the conventional 3D graphics that we we are mainly used to. And uh, also sometimes you get the um, some faces to the names also, which is kind of interesting. A 
last get together for Amiga format. Yeah, and then a whole pile of articles. I, th this one I think was one of the most largest, or is the largest Amiga format magazine I think it was published. Blue Forage up down. And then here you see the hardware. You can also follow the iteration and the advancement of the uh, hardware and accessories uh, over time. So you can see what kind of stuff was available. Uh, for example, what size of hard drives and stuff were, were coming on the market, and CD-ROMs, and oh, I Omega zip drives. <laughs> Actually used those. Um, scrapped a lot of hardware in, in, during my lifetime. I've had a lot of this hardware, a lot of it I just threw away because I thought oh, I'll never use this ever again. Now I really miss that I, I didn't keep up. Yeah, ah, not all of it, but I mean, it, it would have been nice to have kept a subset of, uh, you know, the SCSI hard drives and IOMEGA zip drives and other stuff that you know, I just chucked away because I thought it would never be used. Anyway, I won't go into any detail, but I, as I said, I'll put a link to the Transputer um, article in Wikipedia. And, and also the Amiga format um, Wikipedia page. So, anyway, I thought that I'd just introduce the Amiga format magazine. I thought it was one of the, one of the key, um, basically, UK-based magazines that were out there. There was a thing, there was a version for the U US market also that followed kind of the same trend. But of course it has a US advertisements and more US-based uh, adver uh, yeah, tech articles and stuff. But um, I think they're still worth it. I mean, they don't cost that much to buy a whole collection. and. Um, as I said, even the cover discs are available, and then if one um, pairs it with one, some investigative work that one's doing from an archaeological perspective, I think one gets some um, relevant info out of them even today. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little introduction. Sadly, I can't get any um, subs subsidies for this because the Amica format is dead. <laughs> so no, no, no sponsorship income for this one. <laughs> but anyway. I hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one.